see you back on the digger. If you like this kind of content, do me a favor, swipe up. You can see my subscribe button there, hit that, hit the all bell, uh, all bell notification. That way you're gonna get to see all the weird and wonderful content that I'm up to. You'll notice I'm back on the digger. Three mistakes have cost me thousands. Uh, originally, this hole here, as I've explained on different videos, was supposed to be dug with the digger, but it was done on the bulldozer, which is just there. Um, in turn, completely ruined what I wanted to do, so I'm now having to re-get the digger back out, which has cost me money to rehire that. Uh, it's cost me money for the original digger driver that did that. And because we're in such a rush on these, let me spin you around. We're about a foot out of kilt for where we want to be on that back corner over there. So in turn, what I need to do is drain this off. And this one's even worse. About a foot and a half out of kilt on this one. So, plan to fix it. That big pile over there is 15 ton of sharp sand. What I'm going to be doing is inside of here, is finding my level, um, getting some of the old railway sleepers all the way along the edge and across the front edge and all the way down across the back edge once that's settled. Uh, I'm going to be pulling that over to here and then getting this as flat as I can. In turn, what I'm going to do then is whack a plate this all down so it's nice and flat. I need to find my highest spot and my lowest spot so I can figure out on average what it's gonna to take to actually fill this because I do not think 15 tons is gonna to be enough and per 15 tons, I'm paying 565 quid. Uh, you can see on this railway sleeper ponds that we've got here, just how far out it is in places. So in here, I need to board the inside uh, and then go ahead and uh, put some sharp sand in here. Again, whack a plate that down and get that nice and flat. This has still got to come up another uh, two railway sleepers because it'll be 1.4 meters deep. <laughs> so now what I've got to do is literally go ahead, get on my little mini digger and pull all of this waste spoil here into this hole here. In total, I'm estimating it probably cost me in the region of about three and a half thousand pounds. Labour for the lads, tools, time, materials. All because I went at it like a bit of a bull in a china shop. I mean, these ones aren't necessarily anybody's fault. The ground levelled a little bit, so we need to put that sharp sand down to stop that from happening again. On this video, you'll be fixing all the problems that we've got. Uh, now, at this point, we should be around seven to ten days outside of the working weekend, which is where you guys are going to be coming over. Uh, there's about six or seven you already that have very kindly offered to donate your time to be able to bring the project back ahead. We did discuss it on the live stream. Um, and we'll give you a, a value. So, for example, if you come over on the Saturday, we'll give you a £200 value to spend on Koi. Uh, or if you come over Saturday and Sunday, we'll give you a £500 uh, to spend. If you can just make the Sunday, £200 value as well. Uh, we're going to have all the, all the tools here, all the machinery. Uh, I've got to get ready for my steel shipping containers that are going to be going over there in the corner. Again, all that's going to be explained on this video. Um, so yeah, let me crack on with this digger, fill this hole in, try to reclaim back some time, and hopefully try and reclaim back some dosh. Let's go. Okay, so I started pulling a load back from this side and a load back from this side as well. <coughs> now it's quite loose. I'm literally just going to get the Komatsu dumper. Uh, bring it around the back and just literally start pulling it all in now from all sides to actually get this nice and full. I'm actually due to go away for a week to the Costa del Sol. So hopefully, if I can leave a little bit of a mound on here, when it settles, it'll resettle back like this underneath my feet. Um, this is the polytunnel that I need to get the string lines across um, and pull them down uh, and get it nice and level. Obviously, this one here isn't going to have a door on it. The only one that's going to have a door on it is this one here in the middle. So when you first walk in, or should I say when you come up on the car park, this will be sealed. These two here on the end will have doors. So sealed, open, and sealed. Um, so you'll literally walk through this bit here. You should have a big Nexus filter in here. 
Uh, you'll see you'll see and hear all the filtration on there and there's just going to be sleep upon after sleep upon after sleep upon down the back and this here will be the interconnecting door to go through into these two sides here and obviously this one is the one that's going to be perfectly level because i want to get the other basins in here because what that will then enable me to do is pump the water out of these basins over into these ones so i don't waste all the water that i've used so far um i mean it's a damn shame that that's sunk the way that it has because like i say it's just literally that back gap piece over there where it's just a little bit too high uh, obviously we can't knock it down into the ground or anything like that because it's already quite firm down there but it's a little bit too high for my liking for where i want it to be but it was actually surprisingly quite warm to be fair in there this one though it's just an absolute pain so if i'm going to do it i might as well do it right pull this one out it's just this back side piece here needs knocking in over the back but like i say we'll get it out do it properly uh drop the rest of the drainage runs in and stuff like that but once we've actually got this bit here nice and flat uh on the bulldozer what i need to do is my electric feed is going to be coming in from this corner down here so I actually need to peg out uh, eight foot, well, 10 foot across by 40 foot in length, and then another 10 foot across by 20 foot in length, and I wanna leave a little paddock area over here, uh, which is where my electrics are gonna be coming in. Um, and then this bit here is obviously gonna have one big polytunnel down, so I'm actually gonna bring these out as far as I possibly can, um, literally backing onto the, uh, the still shipping containers. One of those is going to be a section 23. For those of you who don't know what that is, um, it's basically when you're importing koi from all over the world, if it is any of your paperwork's incorrect or wrong or anything like that, or anybody else's paperwork is, I can actually nominate and say, hey, you can, you can use a section 23. We can, we've got it so it's a secure on site facility, one door in, one door out. But again, when we're building that, we will do a dedicated video on that. Um, not necessarily a long video on this one because I'm cheesed off that I didn't do it right and it has literally cost me thousands. So we go again. We keep going, we have to face these challenges. Obviously it's never always just gonna be sunshine and rainbows. Once this here is nice and filled in and nice and level, like I say, we can then carry on with the remaining polytunnels. The back polytunnel over here is going literally going to be the picking and packing polytunnel. So obviously I want to get a steel shipping containers in next week and then actually crack on and go ahead and put that polytunnel in over there at the back. Um, and then again, it's just a matter of building up these other two once we've got these three covered, but we'll probably get these covered on the working weekend. Um, so I need to see first how far in I'm actually able to go. Excuse me, I need to shave my moustache, it's tickling my nose. So yeah, I need to see how far back this here can actually go. So I can actually figure out how much polytunnel I need to go ahead and order. Because I'll say each one of these is 5,000 gallons. So there's gonna be another one just after that doorway there, going down here. So in here there'll be 15,000 gallons, 360,000 litres, another 360,000 litres in here, and then probably a big show pond towards the end. Uh, and then the other two uh, systems that are over here, that one of those is going to be a dedicated for the fry that we actually import over. And the other one's going to be um, a customer holding tank. So when we do these events and stuff like that, we've got quite a large quarantine area. Um, like I say, at any given point on site, I want over 250,000 quid. So anything from this big, if you just show the meter, folks. Um, but yeah, I'm going to draw it to a close there. And like I say, not all sunshine and rainbows. Tits off that I got it wrong, but we go again. Um, I'm going to jump on this now. So footage of me on the uh, bulldozer, I'll be on the next one. Uh, but yeah, other than that, thanks for watching, folks. Subscribe along. Stay safe, stay sane. Most importantly, people stay happy. Balding Reefer, out. <laughs>